Hey everyone, it's me, John Lorden. Welcome to another episode of Itchy Mysteries, this one being recorded for March 22nd, 2018. A quick thank you to all of you brain scratchers out there that are letting me know. Um, I'm getting a lot of updates from you about the Austin serial bombing case. Um, tomorrow on Brain Scratch, we are going to go back into that case because there's been a lot of developments over this week. And I just want to thank all the wonderful people that have been working on that case. And I believe have brought these instances to a close. But tune into Brain Scratch tomorrow for much more detail on that. Um, because things have been kind of heavy over the past week, um, for me in particular with stories on the channel and also personally, I wanted to go with something a little lighter for the itchy mystery this week. Uh, it's something that I've had on the list for a little while. I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna review it or not, but I'm kind of glad I gave it the time. So uh, today we're talking about Patient 17. I caught this on Netflix here in the US. It was produced in 2017. And uh, let's get a quick plot summary from IMDb. Meet a surgeon who claims to remove highly advanced implants, nanotechnology microchips embedded by aliens, non-humans monitoring our earth. Discover the world of abductions, scalar wave transmissions, and a program to study or manipulate the human race. Armed with a patient, a scalpel, black lights, and a stud finder, we seek to verify the authenticity of this alleged off-world implant technology. And we are going to be conducting some experiments of our own by the end of this video. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about this film. So. Uh, first of all, this summary was actually written by the director, which is pretty rare for me to see on IMDb. Um, I feel like he's talking the film up a little bit more <laughs> than it actually deserves. And that's part of where I struggle with this movie. Um, first of all, first off, let me say there's some really good cinematography going on in here. So my, my hat's off to the cinematographer. Um, good color correction is going on. I mean, it's got some pretty good production values going for it. But there is a very heavy hand that is almost interfering with what to me is already an interesting story and trying to just ratchet it up into something kind of bigger than it actually is, just, just like this summary was attempting to do as well. And it's a shame because the truth of the story and the humanity of Patient 17 um, is much more interesting and it doesn't need to be treated in that way. This could have been a really excellent film about this. Uh, now, I don't know if you guys remember, but way back in the early Brain Scratch days, I um, talked to someone in particular about this type of technology. Once again, even back then, I was hearing about people using stud finders to detect these microchip implants. Those theories were much more about some type of government program that was actually implanting these um, into, into people, these, these chips. And it's hard to say chips because we're talking about um, objects that are extremely small, like maybe half the size of a grain of rice um, being extracted from people's bodies. And then when they're tested, it's pretty interesting that there are a bunch of different elements that are going into these very tiny fragments. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course, the big question, how are those fragments winding up in people's bodies? So there is definitely precedent for this topic. Um, it's unfortunate to me that this topic, at least as it's talked about in this documentary, is trying so badly to focus on um, this being some type of alien technology. Uh, like I said, there are so many, there's so there's a better story here being told, in particular by the, pers the person that is patient 17, which I don't think we actually ever learned this guy's name. Uh, but one of the things he's struggling with is, you know, uh, he talks about ha finding this thing in his leg. It's giving him pain. He gets kind of wrapped up in a UFO community, but he is also a religious person. And he actually doesn't want this device to be alien. He wants to find out that, oh no, it's just a piece of metal or a piece of nail fragment. He does construction work. Uh, he rides motorcycles and dirt bikes. I mean, it certainly seems to me like he had many opportunities to get something embedded at some point in his leg. And in particular, in the position it was in, which was kind of on his shin, on the front part of his leg. Um, it's, back, it's, I'm, it's weird because I'm really struggling with 
there are aspects of this film that I really appreciated. And then there are things that I think are just taking it apart. And the reviews are really low for this piece. Uh, I think they're a little unnecessarily low, but I can see why. So uh, where this film doesn't work for me is the narration. The narration is terrible. It sounds like it was written by like an angsty teenager that wants to talk about their sci-fi beliefs or something. Uh, it's overly complicated, overly worded, and super dramatically delivered. Like everything is slowed down when he's doing the narration, almost in an attempt to make it sound more interesting or creepy in some way. But then you have the same guy that is talking in segments where he's interviewing people and you hear his normal voice and you're like, you know what, why can't I get a little more of that during the narration? Uh, that's another thing that's pointed out here. He is not a good interviewer. You get into these conversations, particularly with patient 17, where I'm like, whoa, that what a great topic. I want more detail on that, dive into that way. But unfortunately, this director has his own mindset about where he wants to pull this story and he's constantly pulling this story in a certain direction. Another huge failure of this is, uh, you know, he's talking about this surgeon. Basically, the two main experts that you spend the most time with in this film are extremely biased. They already have these beliefs. They're not trying to test against these beliefs. So you've got pretty much a, a stereotypical case of confirmation bias that is overriding this film. And that's without a significant discovery that I'm, I'm not going to tell you guys about, but you'll know if you watch this when you see it, uh, about who one of these experts is in relation to these types of experiences. Um, but... Outside of all that, I'm struggling because I do think it's a viable topic. Uh, obviously, this is a real occurrence, actually so real that at one point I had to look away from the screen because they're, sh they're showing a surgical procedure. Um, and I almost thought it was unnecessary. I, I get why the filmmaker might have wanted to include it because, you know, almost like a chain of custody when it comes to evidence or something like that. You want to be sure that you're being clear with your audience about where this item is actually coming from. But I also felt like it was treading into, oh, he's putting this in here because he's looking for attention for this film. I think a suitable middle ground there would have been to use still images of the surgical procedure, not actual film of the thing from just about start to finish, including this item literally being cut out of this guy's leg and separated from tissue. Um, so yes, minor graphical warning. I was able to, like I said, I just looked away from the screen, listened to the dialogue that was going on, and a minute later, I was back into it. Um, but for many of us out there, it might be too much to handle that, that one particular segment. Luckily, that's it when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, emotional pulls, that's a weird thing with this film. I just constantly feel like the director is trying to manipulate me emotionally, and I'm not interested in that. When you have such a great central figure like Patient 17, when you have even the interesting character of the surgeon and his belief structure, their words, their point of view means so much more to me than this guy that is trying to investigate this, that I don't know why he didn't focus more on them. I don't know why he didn't spend more time writing some better questions for them so he could have got some better footage of them speaking, just kind of a missed opportunity. And then ultimately, at the end of the film, he even mentions wanting to do one other thing that quite honestly should be an extremely simple thing to do. Like I'm talking buy a plane ticket and get an Uber ride, uh, you know, maybe $500 worth of cost to a film that I'm assuming they've already spent way more money than that on, but he doesn't actually even take that final step. Um, so it's strange when I'm watching this, I get really frustrated by the filmmaker. I get frustrated by his approach. I get frustrated by the experts that he, that he's bringing in or only one type of mindset. There is no real counterbalance here. Um, there are a few particular standout conversations where this thing gets really interesting, where there are other points of view. Like in one example, there's a doctor that says he doesn't believe that these things are extraterrestrial at all. And I wanted to hear a little bit more about that aspect, but unfortunately that's about all that you get. And then, as I mentioned before, the conversation with patient 17 himself, um, there's 
just seems like there was so much more that they could have pulled out of that. I mean, this is a guy that thinks he had an alien experience as a child. You get some details about the experience, but not really great detail. Um, there's just, there's so many questions. I wish that I was sitting in that room and could have helped that conversation a bit, but um, so it's weird. It's, it feels like a swing and a miss, but if you are interested in implants in particular, in finding things in your body using stud finders or stuff like that, uh, which by the way, let me, let me just get to it now. Um, so I do have a Zircon stud finder. This is a stud sensor HD 55. And I have to tell you guys, um, for me to get this thing to go off on parts of my body, uh, it's actually harder for me to find a part of my body where it doesn't go off. Seriously, it's... I mean, it's it's everything. <laughs> Just about everywhere. I put this thing, it goes off. So I don't understand how this is supposed to help me find a microchip in my body when all of my body seems to be setting this thing off. So uh, I don't know that I believe in this as a viable tool for this type of investigation, let me just say. Um, and thankfully, this film didn't really focus on that. There's literally one scene where he's using it, um, but I'm pretty sure on that part of my shin, yeah, exactly, it goes right off too. So uh, I don't think that it's all that valuable personally. Um, so what, what are we left with here? Uh, this thing is rating, like I said, pretty low. It's getting like between, it gets a three on IMDb. I think it gets closer to a five or a six on Amazon. Uh, for me personally, I, uh, I just, I'm right in the middle of that. I gotta say, I think it's a four. It's a shame. Super interesting conversation, excellent subject. Um, even the surgeon, even though I might not believe with uh, his point of view, another great character, but they just, they feel like they're misused in this piece. And then it feels like you have someone that is speaking over this whole thing, trying to amplify the importance of it. Uh, you do get to some very interesting conclusions by the end of it, particularly when they do an analysis of the elements that are making up this object. Um, and you do get enough of a point of view of, of skepticism. You do get some people that are able to get their opinions in this peach piece, which I always respect when these pieces are able to kind of show both sides of that coin, but it is heavily outweighed by the other side, which is believing that um, this is some type of extraterrestrial object that somehow landed on the planet. For me personally, um, I at the end of the film, I don't know what, what to believe. Uh, I think that there's a possibility that it could be extraterrestrial in nature. That doesn't necessarily mean that an alien brought it here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we have meteorites and other fragments and space debris that do wind up on our planet at random times. Is it possible that this guy, um, you know, just fell down in the wrong spot and had this piece embedded in his leg? The likelihood seems super small to me, but I can't rule that out. And I would look down that avenue much more deeply before reaching to this, you know, this is some type of super nanotube transistor technology that is tying to an alien internet and sending them back information about this particular person. It's just, there is there are some big leaps that happen in this film. Conversation's worth having though. And that's really where I struggle with this. So if you're into the UFO thing at all, or into implants, if you think they're UFO or government, I think there's actually something in here for you. You're just going to have to to kind of put up with a very overbearing filmmaker that quite honestly didn't get out of the way of his own narrative, of his own story that he was trying to tell. It's a really clumsy thing that happens in this film, and it's a shame. I think even with some re-editing, it could be a much better piece, but um, it is what it is. I think there's some interesting information. I think some of you out there will enjoy it, uh, but for most of you, probably not exactly what you're looking for. And I can tell you, I will spend no time wasting my time trying to use a stud finder for finding something like this. After my experiments of about five minutes with my stud finder here, I can pretty much completely rule this out as a tool for finding microchips. Uh, anyway, everyone, um, tell me if you've seen this. Let's talk about it in the comments below. 
I hope that was a helpful review, and thank you so much for hanging out with me on this episode of Itchy Mysteries. Please come back for the updates on Austin tomorrow on Brain Scratch, and I will see you there. 